This is a Smurf house. Actually, I'm just kidding. Everyone knows Smurfs are extinct. A French house cat named D'Artagnan killed and ate the last known Smurf in 1964. So this is a house for humans, maybe even for you. The idea is to rethink what's possible when you think about your home. These folks are coming up with new ways to make homes on an assembly line using carbon negative cement. Why do this? Well, in a state that is increasingly on fire? Overnight, another wave of destruction. Thousands of structures remain under threat. It might be a good idea to make homes from fire-resistant materials. Zomes was born out of my brother and myself wanting to build something on our property so that when our parents visit from Egypt, they have a place to stay. And building something out of wood just made very little to no sense to us. Even without wildfires, we're in the midst of a massive housing shortage. All over the US, there are people who can't afford to live near where they work. So right now, lots of people are trying to shake up the way we build homes, because there's just not enough of them. If we knew all the challenges and understood why there's little innovation in the construction industry, then we would have never tried. You had to be ignorant and arrogant enough to assume that you can do something different, which we did. Beyond the design and materials of these zones is an idea that could totally change the way we build. And it might be the way to a future without housing shortages. This is Hard Reset, a series about rebuilding our world from scratch. Sonoma County is a great place to buy wine and learn about zones. So that's where we went. Mike walk, take two, marker. And action. What are we doing? <laughs> great question. <laughs> I never know. <laughs> Let's start here with the elephant in the room or the okay. giant uh, dragon egg in the room. What are we looking at here? Well, what we're looking at here is our uh, zone. This is Mike. He gave me a free cup of coffee, and then he showed me around the factory where they make these zones. There's small structures you can build in your backyard or almost anywhere. One of the first things you notice about these structures is the outer shell, which is made of a special kind of cement. This is our rock shop where we make the concrete shells that are the exterior of the zone. Portland cement, or what we call concrete, you know, that's what you see on the roads, and generally what we see as concrete, causes about 8 to 10% of carbon emissions in the, in the world. The man with the impressive tattoos is Kareem. I'm pretty much out of space for tattoos. <laughs> yeah. He and his team have formulated a different kind of cement that is actually carbon negative. One of the things that's amazing about magnesium phosphate to cement is that it sequesters more carbon from the atmosphere over its life cycle than it produces in its production. It's similar to the compound used in things like the pyramids and the Greek amphitheaters, so it's highly bioavailable, it's incredibly resilient, lasts for hundreds and hundreds of years, and also it's incredibly resistant to heat, so it's pretty amazing in that way. Even though the folks at Zomes have their own unique formulation, magnesium phosphate cement is not new. It's been used in one form or another for millennia. But that's just the outside of the structures. The inside is made of complicated geometry. So tell me where we're at and what we're seeing here. What we're seeing here is the frame shop or the wood shop. The outer cement shell is just a fireproof shield for the inner wooden frame which they assemble here as components to be put together on site. Our primary issue was actually earthquakes. Initially, the plan was to not have any wood in the structure, but concrete is very bad at flexural and tensile strength. So if you try and bend or twist concrete, it's brittle, whereas wood is very good at kind of like twisting and bending and not breaking. Each piece of lumber is cut into a specific shape so it can fit together into a larger geometric arrangement called a zonohedron. That's where they got the Z in zones. They're not like big Zima fans or anything. Nice bottle. What is it? Zima. Beer? No, something different. We like to say there's no place like Zome. Zoke okay. sounds good. Anyway, the frame and outer cladding are made on an assembly line and then shipped to be put together on site. This is totally different from how most homes are made. The idea here is that these structures can be made from a kit of parts. Instead of requiring a whole construction crew to frame a house over the course of months, you and your friends could put this together in a few weeks. The Zome is not a new idea. Architect Steve Baer was building them as early as the 1960s, and many others have made similar designs. It uses the principles of biomimicry, which is to look like things in nature. It just elicits a different feeling being inside a circular, kind of naturally shaped structure. 
These zones are just over 240 square feet inside, which is not a lot, but the organic shape can make it feel more spacious, with wide curving walls and a high ceiling. Also, turns out this toilet was not hooked up to plumbing. Anyway, live and learn. I actually don't think there is a single 90 degree angle in the entire structure, and not because we were allergic to these angles or anything, it's just that's the most efficient and effective way to build it. No matter how spacious the curving walls feel, these zones are still very compact. Are these really potential replacements for traditional homes? So we initially designed the zone with an ADU in mind, whether it was a gym or just a place for solitude, whatever it is, you know, just a kind of an extra space. But what we realized as we started building it is the vast majority of people were interested in living in it. And that's when we moved more to a kind of a tiny home alternative, basically. It's easy to imagine one person living here, or maybe a couple with really great communication skills. But if you want to raise kids, it might get real hard. We're also already built and designed a hallway where you can connect multiple, even different sized zones. So you can have one 400 square foot zone with two 265 square foot zones attached to it, kind of in a pod formation. We find it a really natural way to think about your home is you want to slowly expand it in, a, in the same kind of beautiful way as you built the initial kind of structure that you live in. Zooms aren't meant to replace the way every home is built, but there's an important idea at work here that should change the way every home is built. I've had experience with construction myself, and it's always been pretty difficult. The industry is full of, you know, high promises. Everything's made to look easy before you do it, and then once you start, everything takes three times as long and costs at least twice as much. Modern manufacturing has the potential to bring down costs for homes, which would be amazing. But even having just a reliable set price for construction would be a huge improvement by itself. We always give our customers a quote, and then that quote is solid. I think about this as a restorative experience for construction. Anyone who's inv been involved in construction usually has some kind of traumatic experience of how long things take, how much BS there is, how much you're at an information disadvantage. Traditional construction is notorious for being expensive, slow, and chaotic, and almost never stays on budget. Well, everything looks pretty well under control. It does? Well, not to the layman's eyes, of course. But this is still the most common way that homes are made, on-site and from scratch. The folks at Zomes are just one of many different attempts to rethink how we do this, because we don't do anything else this way. Think of it this way. If auto workers assembled cars on site from scratch, the process would be so problematic that most people wouldn't be able to afford to have a car made. The assembly line has made car ownership into an assumption for most people. Manufacturing has put smartphones into everyone's pockets and a car in almost every driveway. If we can tap into those same assembly line efficiencies, can we make home ownership into something just as ubiquitous? So picture a scenario where the vast majority of homes were made with the efficiencies of modern manufacturing. Homes made of mass-produced components that can be assembled without specialized labor would be far more affordable and customizable. So the idea of Zomes is to have a building that is beautiful, that is environmentally friendly, that is fire resistant, and that can be put up into your property within a month. And it's done and it's clean, no heavy machinery, no special equipment, and no kind of convoluted contracting involved. My hope for the future is not just more innovation for the sake of innovation, but more room to allow folks to kind of solve their own issue and feel proud of where they live and potentially contribute to their own kind of building spaces and not feel so victimized. My hope is to kind of remove that as much as possible. In this future, the homes we build might not look so different from the homes we already make. Not everyone wants to live in a zone or a dome or a spire after all. But ideas like Zomes invite us to imagine what if our homes could shrink and grow as our families do? Or what if we could make a future where home ownership wasn't synonymous with a lifetime of debt? There's no one way to make that happen, but there is one way to make sure it doesn't. And that's to keep doing things the way we already do. Come back next time for another episode of Hard Reset. Subscribe to Freethink to watch our other original series and documentaries about technology and people that are changing our world.